One of the things that's that's fascinated me about uh, Cuban music, Brazilian, Haitian music, um, is that uh, all the roads sort of point back to West Africa where I have been. So when I hear um, patterns like tumbao or marcha um, in the Cuban tradition, um, you know, it sounds a lot like Pon Logo or High Life that I've seen in Ghana. So, so um, for me, uh, I didn't want to just stop my interest in my research in West Africa. I wanted to learn more about this transatlantic dialogue. Yeah. Uh, and so Cuba was the next spot. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, you had gone um, a year or two before me and, and uh, just said how amazing it was. And so I thought, you know, this is a natural extension. And then P.S. in our store, we sell Cuban instruments. We sell congas, bongos, cajones, timbales. And just like with the African drums, I have always felt that I owe it to my customers. I have like a cultural responsibility to know about the instruments, right. to, to know where it's from, how it's played, how to fix it, how to tune it. Yeah. I mean, it's surprising how many music stores, you know, they don't even know, like they, they don't even know how to pronounce djembe or something like well, that. Well, I love it when you go in and the, and the, the congas are all like tipped at the good angle. Yeah, 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 all cattywampus. Yeah. Um, and so part of it was was just sort of like my my business philosophy that like you know I can't I can't just sell these instruments and not know anything about it I actually owe my customers so um, I think my first trip was around 2004 and at that point it was still illegal to travel to Cuba it was basically I mean the Cubans love us uh, it was it was the United States State Department right. um, that that uh, that that had rules against us traveling there. Was it OFAC or something like that? Yeah, the office the office of foreign foreign asset control, yeah. uh, uh, OFAC. Uh, basically, the way they structured it is, um, uh, you you couldn't spend any money in right. Cuba, and if you did, then then you you ran afoul of the OFAC rules, and they could find you. Uh, they sorry, they could fine you, fifteen thousand dollars, and so. At that point, we had to sneak into to, to Cuba. It was the, the first of about three trips where um, you, you you go to Cancun, uh, and then you have a separate ticket uh, purchased through a Canadian travel company, um, and then we would have their representative meet me at the airport in uh, uh, in Cancun, and then give us the Cancun to Havana and back portion of the yep. ticket. And then when you get back to the United States, uh, let's say it's Miami, you just sort of tear all that stuff up. They ask uh, Mr. Boynton, where were you? Um, oh man, we went to, to, to Cancun, beaches were great, hung out at Senior Frogs, man, <laughs> drank margaritas, man, I'm going back. Yeah. And uh, and that's how we did it, is we kind of snuck in. That worked, except for once they kind of caught our, our, uh, our style. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you and I were, were traveling together um, and uh, uh, our, our big mistake was um, was uh, the final leg of our trip was like Cancun to Minneapolis. Minneapolis. You know, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the Customs and Border <clears throat> folks in, in Minneapolis weren't really familiar with people going to Cuba. Um, so uh, yeah, you and I got harassed, uh, had my cigars confiscated, and then I was, I made the cardinal mistake of making a joke to the customs guys like, yeah, I bet you guys are really gonna toss those, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about the Cohibas that they had just confiscated. Well, they didn't think that was funny. At all. At all. <laughs> uh, and so uh, uh, I think the punchline uh, of what they said when we were there is uh, Mr. Boynton, uh, people who travel to, to, to Cuba for professional purposes are people who work for National Geographic or for CNN or the Wall Street Journal, or they're doing a dissertation for their, uh, for, for their degree at Harvard. You don't fit any of these categories, so I'm gonna flag your account, and if you ever go into Cuba again, you will pay the fine. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that was in about 2006. Uh, Seems like I remember him also saying, uh, Treating with the enemy or something? Hey, yeah. probably so. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of that is uh, uh, is the uh, is what makes it fun, you know. Yeah. Is is just the challenge of getting in, um, and then also we get so much propaganda about how yeah the the communist country and and uh, dictatorships and human rights and all that. Some of that is is is, is valid, but we forget about the people. And so when I was over there, I met every day. Uh, uh, Cuban people who were lovely and um, and 
some of them have become friends for life. Yeah. And um, and so for me, um, you know, this this definitely fits my life philosophy of um, you know don't just uh, take what they say on TV and believe everything. And so I challenged myself to go see what life was was really like. And I'm glad that I did because it's, it, well, first of all, I thought that the Cubans hated us. They didn't want us. Uh, they, 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 um, uh, they're the ones who wouldn't let us into their country. Right. Not at all. Uh, the, 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 the first thing that you see when you land in Havana is you see Air France, British Airways, Air Italia, mm -hmm. and you quickly realize, oh my God, the Everyone whole rest of the there. world is there except for the Americans. Yep. And, uh, and then uh, even the, the customs people, well, when you and I uh, went those those two times in the early 2000s, um, they wouldn't stamp your passport out of respect for us. So they would stamp a piece of paper that they stuck in your passport. And then when you left, you gave the customs officer that piece of paper. Uh, and then you didn't have any stamps showing that, that you had been um, in Cuba so that you could arrive in the States and you wouldn't get in trouble. Well, the Cubans did that uh, in deference to us because right. they wanted us to have the ability to travel there, to learn um, without getting in trouble. I wanna play, I need to play.